What's nothing's good right now, Commanders fans. Um, I'm I'm kind of speechless. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I mean, it's it's a lot to say. I mean, this is a disappointing performance. Not even a loss. Like I, I paid us to lose anyway, but this is just a, a disappointing effort, a disappointing performance. Ameo Forbes uh, got benched for Noah Igbenagabe. He deserved to get benched. He had a face mask and a holy or. Uh, a face mask and a pass interference penalty on the same play. Like, we rarely see that in the league, and we saw that. Kate York, awful. He needs to go. He needs to be released. He should be cut. He shouldn't be back on the plane. He was awful. Um, but, yeah, the defense that was supposed to be violent, tough, taking the ball away. We love turnovers. Ball is life. Uh, you know, stuff like that. We didn't see any of that. They gave up 37 points. They had Baker Mayfield looking like Vanilla Vic out there. Third and six, evading the rush. Uh, making Houdini, Houdini moves, running for the first down, celebrating and going off like it's a progressive commercial from back in the day and whatnot. Um, it was rough. And then Mike Evans, he did what he did. Like, we all we all knew that was going to happen. Mike Evans, we knew Mike Evans was going to go out there and get a couple touchdowns. We knew Chris Godwin was going to go out there and cook. We knew that was going to happen. Um, but, yeah, against Mikey Sanders still, there was a, a breakdown. To, and See, the thing is, like, it, this could have been worse for the defense. This could have been worse. Because Jalen McMillan dropped a pass in the beginning of the game, and then Baker Mayfield overthrew somebody in, on third and one, where Cleveland Farrell got the uh, pants to the hands to the face, but Baker overthrew. I think it was Jalen McMillan again. So it really could have been fifty. It really could have been fifty to what, what did we get? Twenty one. And then I'm gonna get to the Dan Quinn decision making and clock. And this is what I said in my preview video, guys. You know, I know people hate when I talk about the previous regime and stuff and Ron and whatnot. But that was the knock against Dan Quinn is decision making, clock management with the Falcons. That was that was the downfall of Dan Quinn. You know, a lot of the bad things about Dan Quinn was clock management, decision making, same things we we saw from Ron Rivera. Two minute warning. Are you going to call a timeout to stop the clock when it's third and three in the first half? He didn't do that. Are you going to go for two? What was the score? I wrote it down. I think it was twenty three to thirteen. It was it was, it was twenty three to thirteen. We could have went for two and to make and then make it go to 23-15, but it was 23-14. to 14, So that was a terrible decision by Dan Quinn. Didn't win or lose the game, but you want to give your guys confidence and just make smart, analytical, mathematical decisions. That's what I want to see from Dan Quinn. You have a terrible kicker in Cade York. It's fourth and ten. You decide to kick the field goal for a 56-yard field goal attempt. And, of course, he misses it, and the Buccaneers get advantageous field position. So those are decision make, decisions you have to make. When you have a bad kicker, sometimes you just got to live to fight another day and punt and get field positions. Even though our defense was all, Bobby Wagner was slow as crap today, too. Um, so he didn't look good. Mikey Sandwich still had a disappointing debut. He was getting cooked. But like I said, it was Chris Godwin. So it was kind of a baptism kind of day for him. They just, they got, they, the Buccaneers are a talented team. Say what you want to say about Baker and he's mid and all this stuff. Like, they just have talent. Like, Rashad White is talented. Bucky Irving's talented. McMillan is talented. They're a good team. They're a good team. I respect them for sure. They're, re they're a respectable team right now. They have a respectable roster right now. Um, Jaden did start out with some jitters. The pass to B-Rob was awful. I'm going to critique Jaden. We got to keep it real. We got to keep, keep it honest. I'm a big Jaden fan. I liked a lot of the things that I saw. He's got to keep his helmet on some way, somehow. He's got to keep his helmet on. It, it keeps slipping off some way, somehow. But um, the pass to B Rob, you saw the jitters there, kind of like the nervousness that we saw against the Jets, where he overthrew Austin Eckler. I thought Austin Eckler looked good today. I thought Zach Hurts looked good. I think there was a few positives. I thought Eckler looked good. I thought B Rob looked good on the run after the catch, um, where he got he got us to the uh, one yard line where it should have where I thought it was a touchdown or whatever, but he did he just didn't get in. And um, so I thought we saw some good things from B Rob Eckler. Zach Hurts had a few catches, not many, like three catches, but I thought he looked productive out there. So that's like the only few good things I can say. But the first half, it was either Jaden's going to run around and run for a first down or that's it. And that's it. Oh, also, Terry McLaurin did not get a catch in the first half. That was traumatizing. It felt like I was watching last year. That was awful. You cannot go through the whole first half without Terry McLaurin catching a screen pass, a bubble screen, uh, a slant, something. He has to get the football. He has to get the football some way, somehow. And in the round, our best player on offense has to touch the football. He has to touch the football. You can't do that, Cliff. You can't do that. Third and 18, you throw a, a trick play to Luke McCaffrey, you're supposed to throw the ball downfield. You can't do that, Cliff. That's unacceptable, in my opinion. That's just unacceptable. Um, 
And then Terry, uh, Jaden overthrew Terry where he beat Jamel Dean. And I said this, like, there's going to be opportunities down the field for this team. There's going to be opportunities. Noah Brown was inactive. Like, that was odd. You bring him in, you sign him. He's inactive. Is he really not ready to go with this receiving core? He's not, he's not better than the other guys on the receiving core to be on the roster? Like, that was weird. So is he not ready? He was practicing and practicing with Jaden after, after practice and what may take him more reps. And he's inactive? That was odd. Not not saying that would have won the game or anything, but or changed the game. But I mean, it would have helped. I think it would have helped. So, and we all look at the all twenty two. Were guys just not open, or did Jay just have to run around for his life? Like, what what was the decision making process for Jaden there? You know, so that's something that I can't really talk about. Um, Cleveland Fairhands to the face. He did get a sack, so that helped. That the like, one positive play. The twelve men on the field penalty that was concerning. That's stuff that should not happen, guys. That stuff. I know it's the first game, but come on now. And Bobby Wagner didn't play the whole preseason. I get it. He's a veteran, but he looked like he should have at least took one or two snaps out there because he looked. He looked like he. Yeah, he looked like he's a little behind out there. Uh, ben St. Juice dropped the interception. That was a Carlos Rogers kind of drop. It was a tough catch to make, but we gotta we gotta want big, we gotta want nice things. We gotta ball his life, right? You gotta catch that interception, Ben St. Juice. You gotta you gotta do that. You can't drop interceptions. That was a good play by him, but you gotta catch the football. Um, Alameda block on the back call. That was a ridiculous call. Um, Katie York is a bum. That's my nose. Jamin, da Jamin Davis had a nice tackle for loss. That was one good play that stood out to me. Uh, Katie York also kicked the ball out of bounds, and that was that's a penalty. It's illegal. You can't do that. So he shouldn't be. And we gave him. I know it's a seven round pick, so who cares? And I said this in my when we when we traded for him, I was like, bro, he's not good. Like he literally got cut by the Browns. He lost to D Dustin Hopkins. Like this guy's not good. He was good at LSU, I guess. For kicking a long field goal, but other than that, he's not good. It is what it is. He's just not a good player. Uh, no, Ibn I may playing instead of Mayo Forbes. I already talked about that. Um, JP Finley just t t uh, tweeted out that it looks like a Mayo Forbes just walked into an x ray room. So I don't think he got hurt, honestly. I, 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 I'm not even going to say nothing about it, honestly. Um, should they have called a timeout before 33 to get the ball back at the, end, at the end of the half? Dan Quinn decided not to do that to stop the clock. Uh, Jaden missed Terry down the field. Jay, nice run on second down. I did like some of the runs. Some of the runs that he did make were beautiful runs. Those were electric runs. Like, that's stuff that nobody, not a lot of people can do in the league, where he was evading the rush and just getting first downs, like, automatically. Automatically, he was getting first downs. He got hit in the head, too. I uh, got a first down, and, and we got better uh, field position off of the penalty. Um, and Mayo Forbes, double penalty. Talking about that. Chris Godwin, touchdown on Mayo Forbes. There was a third and 18. Chris Godwin got a, a first down on a screenplay. Bobby Wagner was against Lois Molasses. That was just awful. Um, Jaden Daniels touchdown run. That was a nice run. Should have went for two down, 23 to 13. I talked about that. An eligible man downfield flag got picked up by Graham Barton. So Graham Barton was an, an eligible man downfield, and they picked up the flag. That's the first time I've probably seen that before in my life, where they call it an, an eligible man downfield. They replay it. They review it, pick up the flag, and give him the first down. Um, that was the play where Bobby Wagner looks slow. Uh, fourth quarter, third to 18. 36, Baker Mayfield escapes again for the first down run and celebrates. And then they threw the touchdown to Mike Evans for his second touchdown. Bucky Irving was carving us up, running over us, just getting first down after first down. Um, and then Cliff had one good drive, one really good drive where we were doing some RPOs and B. Roberts running the ball well, a couple of plays. But, um, yeah, it was it was rough, guys. It was rough. And the offensive line, like I said, it's hard to tell if they were really awful. I don't think they were trash. And I don't think Jaden was awful either. Like, Jaden had three fumbles, though. That He's got to clean that up. He had three fumbles. I thought he only had, like, two. But he had three fumbles. He, I think we recovered all of them. But he had three fumbles. He's got to work on that. He got sacked twice. So he, he wasn't sacked much just because he's, like, so elusive. Like, with Sam Howell, he probably would have been sacked. Like, and Sam's elusive, too. But Sam would get sacked like five, six times. Carson Wentz gets sacked eight, nine times. But that's not going to happen with Jaden because he's so elusive. Um, I'm looking at the blown coverage play. Jeremy Chen was basically non-existent out there too. Um, the male Forbes did stop on one play. And then they they got a first down. Uh, but like I said, zero receiving yards for the commanders in the, in the first half. That That's so bad, man. That's really hard to do. A wide receiver got no receiver got a yard in the first half. That's really hard to do. Um, let's see here. So let's look at the stats here, and then we'll wrap this up. I may do like duds and duds tomorrow instead of studs and duds, but I do want to go live and just do a temperature check. The Giants look really bad, 
but it's the Giants. So can we really be confident that they were going to be the Giants? Even if the Giants were trying, we lost to Tommy DeVito. We lost to Terod Taylor. And look at this defense. We might fool around and make Daniel Jones look competent again. So it's just like you don't want to overreact from one game. But like I said, I, I always keep it real on this channel. And I keep it honest, guys. Um, and bet US. Zach Ertz got over 20 receiving yards, so I called it on that. If you guys put the wager on on that, Mike Evans, uh, did he get the over? Mike Evans did not get the over on yards, but I did put an anytime touchdown uh, wager, and he had two touchdowns. He had 61 receiving yards, so he went under, so unfortunately. And then Terry was non existent again. Like, we got to give that man a football. He's got to get the football. Lou McCaffrey, three catches for 18 yards. Deami Brown, did he get a target? Like, did Deami even play today? I mean, all the hype, the YouTube documentary, the Deami Brown play today. And that's what I said about this receiving core. Like, that's why I was like, I'm not going to get into it, guys. I'm not going to get into it. Because I, I just didn't think we had the autonomy to really trade anybody when the receiving core that we had. Like, who are we trading people when we don't have receivers? Like, I mean, Deami Brown, zero, zero target. He's not even on ESPN stats. And I was like, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Alamade, one catch for 15 yards. Emerson Crowder, one catch for five yards. Um, and then Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield looked like a legitimate Pro Bowl. Four touchdown passes for Baker. 24 for 30. Um, he had a heck of a day. Chris Godwin, eight catches for 83 yards. Rashad White, six catches for 75 yards. Michael Evans, five catches, 61 yards, and two touchdowns. So a lot of soul searching. I know it's a research and development year. I picked us to lose this game. And... For the Giants game, it's up in the air, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know at this point. But like I said, you know, um, Jaden, he has some things to work on. His legs are incredible. His legs are immaculate and incredible. Like the way he can run. But he's got to get it together. He's got to get the jitters out. He's got to find Terry. He's gotta, you got to connect with your best player. It is what it is. You got to connect with your, with your best player. You really do at the end of the day. You got to find a way to get, get Terry more on the football. Because that, that's, that's, that's a huge way that Jaden's going to be successful in this league. He's got to be able to do that. And Dan Quinn's got to wake up. I think who's the guy who makes the decision making, the analytics, whoever him, whoever's doing the analytical decision making, they got to go at this point. And Kate York's got to go. They got to be fired uh, or, or released. And then uh, Emmanuel Forbes, I don't know what to do with him at this point, but um, he's a lost cause. He's a lost cause at this point. Joey Jr., coaching staff, whatever. They're just not, they're just, I don't think there's a coaching staff that can really, really fix him and make him a great corner in this league. I think right now at this point, Emmanuel Forbes, he's just a rotational corner. He is what he is, and, and Ron Rivera messed up. He done messed up with that pick. So, all right, you guys, you guys let me know what you guys think about everything. Um, like I guess I tried not to overreact, but I just kept it real in this video, as I always do. And we'll see what happens because the Giants, I probably will be, I'll go live around 8 o'clock tomorrow night just to do a temperature check, get the pulse of you guys and whatnot. And uh, we move, we move, we move. And look at the film. We'll move on to the next week and focus on the Giants. It's a winnable game, but it's going to be a tough game. All right, guys, Celtic Commanders, as always, peace.